Today, let's look at this problem from the 1990 Putnam. This is problem A4. And so the morning session are the A questions and the afternoon session of the Putnam are the B questions and they run A1 to A6 and B1 to B6. And generally, the test writers try to put them in order of difficulty. So that means that A4 is well, one of the more difficult ones, but you know, difficulty can really be measured as trickiness here. It may not, in fact, have a long solution. Okay, so anyway, let's see what we have here. We want to consider a paper punch that can be centered at any point in the plane, and then when you activate this paper punch, it removes all points that are in a rational distance from the center. So that means it removes everything on the circle of radius square root of two or on the circle of radius pi away from the center point that you have chosen. But it does that for all irrational numbers. And then the question is, how many punches are required to remove every point in the plane? So let's maybe go over here and look at the small cases, which are obviously too few punches. So if you do one punch, well, I think that's pretty clearly not enough. Because let's say you do your punch at this point A. Well, then you can simply find another point out here that's distance one away from A, and that point is not removed. But then you could sweep out a circle, so it's like a unit circle centered at A, and all of those points will also not be removed. Now let's look at two two punches that is. Well, I claim that this is also not enough. And we can see this in the following way. So let's say here we've got a point A, and then perhaps over here we have a point B. Now there's a distance between A and B, and that distance, well, it could be rational or it could be irrational. But what I wanna do is set R equal to I'll call it the ceiling of the distance from A to B. So it's the first integer that is above the distance from A to B. So I guess if the distance from A to B is an integer, this is not super interesting because observe that A and B would not be removed. And that's because the distance from A to itself is zero, that's rational. The distance from B to itself is zero, that's rational. And then if you have integer distance between them, then, well, that's also rational. So neither of those points are removed. So I guess we should assume that they have irrational distance between them. Then you take the ceiling of that distance, and what we wanna do from there is construct a circle centered at A with this radius. So let's see, that's gonna have kind of the following picture, and I'm just gonna draw a portion of the circle. It's gonna be something like that. Now that's not a great picture of the circle, but I think that's good enough for our purposes. And then what we'll also do is go over here to B, and we'll draw a circle centered at B with this radius as well. And observe that that's gonna have the following picture. That's gonna be a portion of the circle. But observe that these two circles intersect at a point. And let's observe that this point right here has a rational distance from A and from B. So that means that this point right here, which is in blue, is not removed. But since we did this from arbitrary points A and B, that means that you can always find one of these not removed points. But what that tells us is that two punches are indeed not enough. So I guess that brings us to the next question, are three punches enough? And we'll see that they in fact are, but the trick is proving it. So let's do that. Okay, so I claimed before that three punches will work. And in fact, you can center these punches at two nice places and then, well, we can construct the third point. Okay. So let's say we punch at the origin. So that means everything within a rational distance from the origin is not removed. And let's say we also punch along the x-axis at 0, 1. And then let's say we punch along the y-axis or at a point centered on the y-axis, 0, alpha. And what we'd like to do is construct an alpha 
so that it's impossible for a point to be a rational distance from each of these. And we're going to do that uh, kind of thinking ahead towards a contradiction. So we'll try to work towards a contradiction and that will motivate us to put some sort of condition on alpha. Okay, so let's suppose we have a point A, B, so that the distance from A, B to 0, 0 and the distance from A, B to 1, 0 and the distance from A, B to 0, alpha, those are all rational. Okay, so now let's expand these distances out using the distance formula. So let's say maybe that uh, this number that we'll call D1, which is not the distance from A, B to the origin, but perhaps it's the distance squared. So D1 is equal to A squared plus B squared, and we know that this is rational. So if the distance is rational, then the distance squared is rational. And then likewise, we can do something similar for the other two conditions. So observe that here we have a minus 1 squared plus b squared. That's going to be equal to this number d2, which is rational. And then finally, a squared plus b minus alpha squared is equal to d3, which, again, is rational. Okay, great. But let's observe that I can multiply out these last two, and perhaps that'll be helpful. This first one gives me a squared plus b squared, and then let's see, minus 2a plus 1. Okay, and from this point, what I'll do is I'll take this first equation and this second equation, and then I'll subtract them, and that'll give me, well, let's see, it'll give me this expression for 2a minus 1 in terms of a rational number. So we'll have, in fact, 2a minus 1 is equal to, let's see, d1 minus d2. So in other words, a is equal to, let's see, d1 minus d2 plus 1 over 2. But perhaps the important thing here is that a is rational. And, well, we're not really going to write it in terms of this d1 and d2. We'll just keep in mind that we know that, like I said, a, in fact, has to be a rational number. Okay, cool. But now, if a is rational, that means that a squared is rational. But then plugging that into this formula up here with a squared plus b squared is rational, that means that b squared is also a rational number. So we don't know that b is rational, and in fact, maybe it's not, but we do know that b squares to a rational number. Now, well, we kind of left this multiplication out hanging, so let's go ahead and take care of that. We have a squared plus b squared, and then minus 2 times alpha times b, and then plus alpha squared. But now let's observe from this first equation and then this third equation, we see that, let's see, taking their difference, we'll have 2 alpha b minus alpha squared must be rational. Now, again, we don't know anything about the rationality of b. We do know something about the rationality of b squared. So let's use that by maybe squaring this equation that we have right here. That's going to give us 4 alpha squared b squared. And then we'll have, let's see, after that it'll be minus 4 times alpha cubed times b and then plus alpha to the fourth. So we've got something like that. But we know that this is rational. Okay, so this is a rational number. But since it's a rational number, we can write it as, well, we could write it as perhaps r, which is rational. Okay, great. Now, what I'd like to do from here is take this 4 alpha cubed b and observe that I can write it in the following way. I can write this as 2 alpha squared times 2 alpha b. Okay, nice. But then I know that 2 alpha b minus alpha squared is rational. 
but that means that my two alpha b is in fact equal to alpha squared plus some other number t, which is rational. So let's make that maybe substitution. Okay, so let's start to put all of this together. So we have alpha to the fourth, and then after that we'll have minus two times alpha squared, and then we'll have alpha squared plus t from doing this substitution right here. And then after that, we'll have plus four alpha squared times b squared. And then we have this is equal to a rational number, but I'll just write this as minus r equals zero. Okay, great. But observe what we have here is alpha is a root of some polynomial equation. Uh, with coefficients in the rational numbers. Because everything in that equation is rational except for the alpha terms. So let's recall that we're trying to go for a contradiction. In other words, we're trying to pick an alpha so that it's impossible for the distance from A to B, where A and B are arbitrary, to each of those three points are all simultaneously rational. But now let's observe that that seems to be possible if alpha satisfies this polynomial equation. But that gives us a big hint of how we should choose alpha. We could choose alpha to be a number that doesn't satisfy any polynomial equation. But that exactly defines something called a transcendental number. So that's going to actually finish this whole thing off. So if alpha is transcendental, then no such coordinate a, b exists. So to step back, what does that really mean? So if we pick three points, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, comma, some transcendental number, then there don't exist any points in the plane that are simultaneously a rational distance from these three points, which means the punch at the first point combined with the punch at the second point combined with the punch at the third point will clear every point in the plane. Now, you might say here, well, what are some examples of transcendental numbers I could use? Well, I mean, there are some classic examples of transcendental numbers. We could take perhaps alpha equal to e or alpha equal to pi, or there are in fact some more obscure ones which we won't talk about here, but I think those are probably like a good choice just to get this question done as quickly as possible. Okay, so anyway, we finished this off. We've just shown that three punches will suffice for clearing out every point in the plane, whereas two punches doesn't. So that means the minimal amount of punches is three.